hash map megabytes. So let's start with the first dimension that is metadata repository. The metadata repository is used to document metadata, manage and perform analysis using metadata. Now we are going to look at its technical parameters. So first of all, we are going to discuss how does auto refresh of metadata and metadata freshness is maintained in data hub. So in auto refresh of metadata, we don't need to manually reload the metadata again and again and this tool will automatically refresh the metadata on a periodic schedule. And in metadata freshness, we'll see how the metadata is kept fresh or updated in data hub. Now we'll go to data hub and click on ingestion. After that, we'll click on create new source. Then we'll find a number of sources from where we can ingest our metadata. So for now, I'm going to click on Snowflake. And then this is configure Snowflake recipe. And we are going to configure the source for metadata ingestion. And now I have copied the configurations into this recipe. So this will tell the ingestion where to pull the data from. And after that, I'll click on next. And then this is asking me to schedule the execution of this ingestion. So you can schedule it on minute, hour, day, month, or on a weekly basis. So for now, I'm going to schedule it at 2 a.m. every day. So what this schedule will do is it will automatically execute this ingestion every day at 2 a.m. And this will also help me to automate the refresh of our metadata. And we can find the updated metadata in our data hub. After that, we'll select our time zone and then we'll click on next. And then this is asking me to give a name to this ingestion source. So let's say snow underscore ingest. And now I'll click on done. After that, a new source will be created, which is scheduled at 2 a.m. And this will be executed every day and the metadata will get updated every day. So this is how refresh of metadata is automated and metadata freshness is maintained in Data Hub. And now we are going to talk about popularity relevance in Data Hub. So we'll go to Data Hub and we'll click on analytics. And this is our analytics page where we can find a number of graph tables and statistics. First of all, at the top, we can see that we have four weekly active users with 28 data sets, two pipelines and three tasks. After that, in product analytics, we have four graph. The first one is for weekly active users. This graph represents the number of weekly active users which are going from 0 to 4 and then again coming to 3. And in the second graph, we can see the number of searches which are made in our last week. And the searches frequency goes from 6 to 3 and then again rising to 15 and then finally going to 0. And at last again, it is rising to 1. And after that, we have two more graphs for section views across entity types and action by entity type. And at the right side, we can find that we have a table for top search queries where we have the name of queries which are frequently searched by the user. And this is the count for how many times it has been queried by the user on this data hub. And the second table is top view data set where we have a number of data set with its view count like how many times it has been viewed by the user on this data hub. From this, the user can find the name of the query and data set which is most frequently used by the user. And we can also get to know which data sets are more popular among the users. And this is how this analytics helps us to understand the popularity of a data set or a query. Now we are going to talk about the next parameter that is frequent users. So frequent user for a data set are the users who frequently view or query a particular data set. Let's have a look on those frequent users of a data set. So we'll go to data hub and we'll pick a data set, let's say web sales raw. 
and after that we'll find this schema for this data set and at the right side in stats section we'll find the number of rows columns and monthly queries and after that we'll find the top users for this data set and these are the users who frequently access or query this data set and after that we'll get to the next parameter that is query history so query history is the number of queries which are done by the user in the past so we'll go to data hub and we'll click on queries tab and after that on this tab we can find the number of queries which has been made for this particular data set in the past so these are the types of queries which are done multiple times by the user now we are going to discuss the last parameter that is metadata versioning metadata versioning refers to a feature that records all the changes that are made to metadata from time of ingestion. Now we'll see how does it get implemented in our Data Hub user interface. Now we'll go to Data Hub and we'll pick a data set, let's say customer for now, and we'll go to stats and click on historical. After that, we'll select profiling history for past one month. And then you can find the metadata load history under profiling runs where this is the row count and this is the column count that was updated at the time of load and you can view the load details by clicking on the date and time link and this is the full detail of the load which was executed at this date and this time and after that under table stats you can find the graph for row count which is straight for now as no change has been made in the row count till now and these small dots denotes the time when the load was executed and every time the same number of rows were updated so that's why the graph is going straight the same happens with column co count over time where again the same number of columns are loaded every time that's why the graph is going straight and after that again the same data has been loaded twice and thrice that's why the null count over time and null percentage over time is getting straight and if the number of column count would have been 29 instead of 19 then definitely you could see a change in this column count over time graph so this was much about metadata versioning thanks for watching hashmap megabytes